Number one, Ibble Dibble here. Hello, friends. I'm backity back and blackity black. Actually, I'm not, but <laughs> Megan isn't either, is she? I'm just joking. Well, half joking, actually. 43% joking. In seriousness, I think laughter and lightheartedness is the right way to approach these topics because it gives us a chance to embrace each other in an inclusive way without any kind of one-upmanship. Experiential, academic, genetic percentage, <laughs> whatever. I initially left out this part from my review of Megan's conversation with z on her Archetypes podcast because how other people racially identify frankly doesn't concern me. Everyone has a different yet equally valid experience of race, and that's fine. Let's hear each other out and also laugh about it where we can. I decided to share why the whole 43% rubs me personally the wrong way, do a little kind of PSA for Americans, and I'd like to hear your opinions too. This video will have three sections, the math, the culture, and the psychology. Let's get started. First, let's just talk about the math. As many have mentioned, Nigerian is a modern day nationality determined by borders drawn by the British in 1914. Nigerian is not an ethnicity. The dominant tribes in Nigeria are, please forgive my pronunciation, I don't speak any of their languages, 25% Hausa, 21% Yoruba, 18% Igbo, 6% Fulani, 3.5% Ibibio, 2.4% Tiv, 2.4% Kanori, 1.8% Izon or Ijaw, some people say. But a full 19.9% of Nigerians belong to about 200 other small tribes. Wikipedia has a pretty extensive list of the ethnic groups in Nigeria, with each tribe linked to the state where they reside. And of course, just like anywhere else, there have been varying degrees of mixing for historic reasons. That said, the results from these DNA testing companies don't name tribes or ethnicities. They name modern day countries where you have the most genetic overlap with other people who have been tested. So in theory, a person could be 100% Hausa and come up on one of these genetic tests as 60% Côte d'Ivoire, 32% Nigeria, 6% Benin, 2% Cameroon, etc. The same is true for any of the majority tribes in West Africa. Plus, just like a lot of white Europeans are really surprised when their DNA comes out like 2% African or 4% Asian from way, way back, West Africans often get 1-5% to South or East African results in there. This young guy on YouTube is a perfect example. Did you find any surprises? Anything that you thought was a bit, mm, well, that's surprising kind of thing? Um, well, to be honest, like, being 100% African, that's not really a surprise because, you know, look at me, come on. <laughs> but what I did find surprising is the 54% Nigerian thing because, like, my mom is Nigerian, my dad's Nigerian, all of my grandparents are Nigerian, and all of my great-grandparents are Nigerian, for all I know. So, I don't know how I'm barely half Nigerian. It's a bit like, I don't know, it's, uh, I don't know. Also, off on a total tangent, I think it's really, really cool that the test results show you your international diaspora of relatives. Is this young man not giving you kid cuddy? I bet they're related. So if this guy is 100% Nigerian, born of Nigerian grandparents in Nigeria, and his DNA only shows 54% Nigerian, the odds that Megan, born of a father of presumably completely European descent and an African-American mother, would have a Nigeria percentage as high as 43% is extremely unlikely. But let's keep going with this. I strive to bring you as close to fact and as far from conjecture as mathematically, statistically, historically possible. So let's talk about Nigerian DNA in what the scientific community terms legacy African Americans, the descendants of slaves in the United States, with no recent admixture, because this is what is relevant to Megan through her mother. Slaves from Nigeria came through two ports, 
It was captured west of the Niger River Delta in modern-day Togo, Benin, and Nigeria. Came from the ethnic groups, and please forgive my pronunciation, please. Correct me in the comments, bear with me, whatever. Yoruba, Fon, Mahi, Ewe, and Nupe. And they were 20.2% of the total number of slaves shipped in the African slave trade. Slaves from Nigeria east of the Niger River Delta, plus Gabon, Equatorial Guinea, Sao Tome and Cameroon were transported through the Bight of Biafra and came from the ethnic groups Ibo, Moko, Ibibio, Chamba, Ija, Fang, Karabali, and other smaller tribes. In the Bight of Biafra, there were two major ports, the Bight of Bani and Calabar. They made up 14.6% of the slaves sold out of Africa in the transatlantic slave trade. If you want to learn more about the African slave traders, who was capturing and selling who, the politics of the region, there's a really great historian on YouTube called Jolly TV. I will link him in my description box below. He has a couple of really good videos on this. Megan's ancestors lived in Georgia and Alabama. About two thirds of Megan's ancestors resided in Georgia. In the Carolina coast region, which encompasses North and South Carolina and Georgia, only 10% of slaves arrived from the Bight of Benin and the Bight of Bonny combined. So fewer than 10% of the slaves arriving there came from what is now modern-day Nigeria. In the Mississippi Delta region, comprised of Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi, and Alabama, a full 33% of the direct arrivals from Africa arrived from the Bight of Bonny and the Bight of Benin combined. Now, the percentage of DNA in legacy African Americans from those regions does not equate to the percentage of slaves imported from those regions. Between the time the transatlantic slave trade was banned in 1808 and the emancipation of the slaves during the American Civil War, there was a terrible business termed the Second Middle Passage, wherein slaves were actively bred like chattel, sold and transported throughout the American South. Slaves descended from those transported through the Bight of Benin and the Bight of Bonny were disproportionately affected by this, causing a disproportionately high amount of DNA that would be associated with modern-day Nigerians to be present in legacy African Americans in the Chesapeake, Carolina coast, and Mississippi Delta regions. In July 2020, a monumental genetic study titled The Genetic Consequences of the Transatlantic Slave Trade in the Americas was published in the American Journal of Human Genetics and republished in Cell and Science. These are all extremely highly esteemed peer-reviewed scientific journals. The PDF is available for free. I will link to it in the description box below. That study is where I'm getting my numbers for the average percentages of Nigerian DNA in legacy African Americans by region. If you are a geneticist, statistician, genealogist, historian of the slave trade, if you are a distant relative of Meghan Markle who matched with her on 23andMe or Ancestry.com or whatever, <laughs> by all means, let me know if you think I'm doing this wrong. I am not trying to malign Megan. I'm trying to uncover the truth here. Just like there are plenty of Nigerians publicly posting their DNA results, there are plenty of genealogists who sorted out Megan's family tree before she got married, same as they do for all famous people. On her dad's side, they went back to pre-revolutionary America around the 1730s and found mostly English with a bit of Irish and German. The last names in her family are Smith, Long, Charles, Beryl, Bird, Sykes, Sanders, Ellsworth, <laughs> with just a couple Mangles, Rosenbergers, and Markles, of course. Considering the social conditions at the time, and her dad's side of the family never mentioning otherwise, I think it's safe to say Megan is a solid 50% European. Now, I'm not pulling this out of my behind. According to published science, the results of extensive genetic studies performed in 2012 and 2013 and published in 2014 in the American Journal of Human Genetics and then in the journal Science, in some American states, mostly Southern states, some percentage of white residents who presumed they were of 100% European ancestry actually have at least 1% African ancestry. But Megan's dad's family is from Pennsylvania, so this is vanishingly improbable. 
And even if it was there, the odds that that African ancestry would be 100% Nigerian, again, just vanishingly improbable. If you were interested in checking out this study, by the way, the full PDF is available for free. I will link it in my description box below. So it's safe to say that Megan's father contributes 0% Nigerian DNA. So the next question is, how Nigerian or not Nigerian is Megan's mother? First, let's look at Doria's mom, Megan's maternal grandmother, responsible for 25% of her DNA. Doria's mom was descended from slaves born in Georgia and South Carolina. She was typically not identified in the family trees published before the big royal wedding because she was the result of incest between a half-brother and sister who shared the same mother. This has been established by public records, birth certificates, cemetery records, contemporary church records and newsletter accounts. I know this is very shocking. I certainly did not expect to find anything like this. I will link to the blog post by the royal historian who has all the undeniable receipts in my description box below. Incest aside, they are descended from Georgia slaves and listed as Negro in post-abolition census records. Descendants of slaves from the Carolina coast region, also sometimes called the South Atlantic, which encompasses North Carolina, South Carolina, and Georgia, typically test out at 26.6% Nigerian descent. And there's no reason for me to think Doria's mom was any less Nigerian than the average. So if she contributed 25% of her DNA to Megan, that would mean 6.65% confirmed Nigerian DNA for Megan insofar as possible from her maternal grandmother. Doria's dad's side is a different story. His mom, Megan's great-grandmother, descends from slaves in Alabama who in post-abolition census records are consistently described as Negro. So again, there's no reason to think that portion of Megan's ancestry carries a percentage of Nigerian DNA different from the average African-American descendant of slaves living in the Gulf states of Alabama, Mississippi, Arkansas, and Louisiana, also commonly called the Mississippi Delta region, which is 29.8% average. So if Megan's getting one-eighth of her genes there, that works out to another 3.725% all but confirmed Nigerian DNA for her, bringing us to a total of 10.375%. In contrast with his wife, Doria's paternal grandfather, Megan's great-grandfather, descends from a line consistently described in post-emancipation records as mulatto. Tracing back on the family tree, both of his parents were described as mulatto, with each descending from a mixed-race pair of one black and one white parent. So, one-sixteenth of the ancestry coming from him is European, one-sixteenth African. Again, multiplying that one-sixteenth African by the average regional percentage of Nigerian descent of 26.6%, that confirms another 1.663% Nigerian ancestry for Megan, bringing us up to 12.04% very likely Nigerian ancestry for Megan total. With all the lines of her father and mother's descent accounted for, that's the answer. The overwhelming odds are that Megan is 12% Nigerian, or less. I say or less for two reasons. First, there's been a similarly peer-reviewed rebuttal to this genetic study published in 2021, claiming that relatively insufficient numbers of Nigerians using companies like 23andMe to get their DNA tested has resulted in more Yoruba sequences being attributed to Nigeria than to their proper modern-day nations which again are artificial constructs anyhow, but would change whatever percentage results Megan would have looked at. Second, and much more messy, are the differing legal and colloquial definitions of mulatto and Negro in America. These definitions varied by state and over time. For example, in Virginia until 1785, you could have three white grandparents and one black grandparent and that still made you a Negro. Only after that did they actually distinguish between mulattoes and Negroes legally. Whereas in Arkansas in 1857, this same heritage was still a matter of legal debate. 
In Georgia, where two-thirds of Megan's African descent derives from, the term mulatto was never legally codified, but colloquially referred to a black slave with a white European owner father. So presumably someone 47% African or less, depending on how many white master fathers there were in any particular family tree. So without her making a reveal video <laughs> signed off on by a forensic accounting firm, we'll never know the full truth. But the overwhelming odds are that Megan Clarkson at 12% Nigerian DNA or less. So the obvious question, was Megan lying? Yes, I think so. And I think my opinion is supported by great evidence. I actually don't think she ever even did a DNA test because if she had, or if she had even done the few hours of academic research I did, or spent the same amount of time watching African-American and biracial African-American DNA result reveal videos on YouTube, she would have realized how extremely off her number sounded. I also want to say that one really fun thing I discovered researching this video is that there is a site called AfricanAncestry.com that does ancestry test kits where they do specify tribes, ethnicities, and regions in Africa. If Megan were really interested, she'd be taking this test. So why do I care if Megan is lying about this? I have two reasons, one cultural, one psychological. Culturally. <laughs> Megan makes Americans look bad. All Americans, North, Central, South, white, black, Hispanic, and native are much more genetically mixed than people in other parts of the world for obvious historical reasons. We think it's fun to test our DNA, find roots we didn't know about or forgot about. Think back on that one time we talked to our great grandfather's almost dead stepbrother when we were six and try to remember if he had any cultural tells associated with the country that side of the family genetically descends from. We even like to travel as tourists to the countries our ancestors came from and check it out, eat the food, hear the language, see the sights. The disconnect arises when Americans tell people from those countries that they are also German, Italian, Irish, Korean, Vietnamese, Nigerian. To people actually living in those countries, if you don't speak the language and eat the food, you ain't it. You're not one of them, whatever your DNA test results say. If you do speak the language and eat the food, but grew up in the States because one of your parents was a recent immigrant, you still only barely qualify because you've never lived there. The world perceives the cultural conflation of genetics and identity among Americans as a symptom of a culture still wrestling with racism and eugenic beliefs. Individual Americans may just be trying to engage in relatable small talk when they say stuff like this and don't understand how they come off. Megan is one of them. Needless to say, this is pretty harmless when we're talking about a small town American who just wants to chat about some recipes that came down in the family or something. But when Megan, as a duchess, and very high-profile American does it. It comes off as ignorant and divisive at best, disingenuous and potentially racist at worst. Could you imagine if Harry got on a podcast talking about how he's 72% German but 2% Black Portuguese? Yikes. Megan is so image-conscious in all the wrong ways. I think Americans, Brits, and Nigerians can agree that it's much more important to be honest than to wear expensive clothes. It's really important to be genuinely curious and tolerant about different cultures rather than think you can dispense with manners and still get an invite to the cookout because of a DNA test. The second thing that bothers me about this and the thing that bothers me the most is the psychological element. Most Americans and Nigerians hearing this from Megan would have a hunch that it was a lie without bothering to do the three hours of research to mathematically debunk her, like me. Narcissists like Megan love to get one over on people. They love to force people to swallow their lies without protest. And Megan loves doing it on the grand scale with all these interviews. The way she sees it, it's her house, her world, her rules, her truth. And the millions of us reading the cut or variety or listening to archetypes just have to deal with it because her influence and audience 
is millions of times greater than ours. She's always suing the press and accusing the press of maligning her when they are actually way too kind to her in circumstances like these. All the headlines came out as Megan reveals her Nigerian heritage when they should have said Megan makes extremely dubious claim to Nigerian heritage. I just had my genealogy done a couple years ago. What? What are you? 43% Nigerian. No way! Nala! Chocolate! Oh my gosh, are you really serious? Yeah. <gasps> this is huge. Ibo Yoruba, do we know? So I, I mean, I'm gonna start to dig deeper into all this because anyone that I've told, especially Nigerian women, are just like, <gasps> What? This is huge for our community. No, honestly, you do look like a Nigerian. You look like my Aunt Uzo. So this is great. Oh my goodness, Uzo. <laughs> Shout out. She tried to establish social dominance over Ziwe, a much more intelligent and successful woman, by putting her in the impossible situation of choosing between questioning Megan, her host, publicly on a very touchy topic, or tolerating her lies manipulation, and myth-building if she let it go. There are so many behaviors here that are textbook narcissist, stealing someone else's identity or accomplishments for clout, pathological lying, relying on people's manners to manipulate them, demanding validation of her truth, which is not the truth, just ew. I'm so happy Ziwe chose the third way <laughs> of sarcastically mocking her to her face. Whether Megan is 43% Nigerian or 0.43% Nigerian, I 100% hate her. Thanks for listening to my rants. Love you all. Toodles. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Um.